establish this mission to create a strategic plan to assist the judicial branch in its mission to resolve matters in a fair, timely, efficient, and open manner. The plan will be based on an examination of our state judicial system on such issues as the physical and logistic accessibility of our courts, the fairness of treatment in all matters and as to all people, and the efficiency and competence in judicial branch job performance. Such an examination would be incomplete without comments from the public. The pub this public hearing, uh, we had one on Monday in Hartford, this public hearing is one way for us to collect input from the public regarding our courts. We are also conducting a survey of 500 individuals who are, have recently used the court system. Finally, we are conducting and have conducted approximately 80 focus groups of individuals who work within it or regularly use it. If you wish to speak and have not yet signed up, please do so at the sign-up sheet, which is located right outside uh, of this door to my right. If you have made copies of your remarks, please provide them to Melissa Farley, who is right there. And if you would do that now, rather than waiting until you approach the podium, we would appreciate that. We will be limiting our speakers to five minutes of testimony so that all interested persons will have the opportunity to speak and to permit time for discussion among the uh, commission members. I'm going to ask each of our speakers tonight to address comments to their recommendations for our strategic plan. If something is working, we certainly would like to know. If something needs improvement, we would also like to know about that. As I'm sure you are aware, talking about particular cases is not within this commission's purview. Before we get started with our first speaker, I would again like to thank you all for coming out tonight to express your concerns, tell us your observations, and to share your suggestions. The first speaker we have signed up this evening is Andrea Wilson. <coughs> Good evening. My name is Andrea Wilson and I live in Bethel, Connecticut. I would like to first thank you for this opportunity to speak to you tonight. It is in fact so important to me to be able to testify here this evening that I actually used my vacation time so that I could be here and address you in my position as a citizen of the state. I want you to know that when I, was in, when I informed my friends, family, and co-workers of my decision to speak here tonight, they all wished me well. And then almost every single one of them added they doubted it would do any good. So from their responses, it appears your goal of achieving an open, accessible, transparent, and accountable court system is indeed a great undertaking. Although I am known to be outspoken, I actually found myself overthinking the words I wanted to say to you this evening, to the point of almost not writing this. You see, as much as I have told others over the years to stand up for their rights and to not be afraid, fear is exactly what I have experienced over the past 24 hours, fear of some of you on this committee. Well, I believe the idea of asking people what they think about this system is a good idea. I do not believe that some of you on the committee are the people who should have the responsibility of hearing us as we attempt to communicate the issues we have with the branch. In other words, I do not see how it is possible for you to both be a part of the problem as well as the solution. I contend that it is not possible to have the fox watch over the hen house. And I am not talking about the judges. I am addressing those of you on the committee who are in judicial management. While there are statements made that you want us to come to you and bring you our issue, bring our issues to you, when we do so as either employees of the branch or members of the public, as soon as you hang up the phone or exit the office, you have already started to plan your damage control. These actions do not ever act to create trust. Rumor, in fact, has it that in this very building, 
There have been several serious issues regarding people who have been given supervisory responsibilities, yet who have abused others and continue to do so. And further, has, and further rumor has it that some of you on this committee are the people who are responsible for rewarding these horrible actions. If this is indeed true, then in doing so, you have acted to create an environment of real fear in those who want to speak up but fear retaliation. I am not here this evening as a branch employee. I am not here as Vice President of Ask Me Local 749. I have taken this time this evening to speak to you as a mother of a homicide victim, as a friend to some of the employees who have suffered for speaking up, and who very honestly feel abused by some of you on this committee. I am here because I am a human being who has great respect and reverence for the justice system as it was intended to be. I am here as a citizen who respects and agrees with the vision of our Chief Justice and wants to see our system truly representing the words on our seal. I know that truth, equity, and justice are not easily obtained and even hard to keep intact. But I do believe having open public hearings is one very large step in exhibiting our actions to trying to live up to our, to our seal. Allow me to close with what one person had to say to me about this committee when after they told me how they wished me well but doubted the committee would do any good. They told me how hard it is to get a job in the branch. The person in frustration stated how they attempted for years and years to get a job in the branch and in spite of some who really tried to help them, for years there was always a must hire on the list. That person was ahead of them, always ahead of them. I would contend that the one and only way in order to make this committee truly meet the goal of creating more public service and trust is to stop this practice of having a must hire and to stop rewarding those who abuse others. All the person I mentioned before wanted to know was, why can't you just get a job because you are qualified for it? Finally, the branch has privatized some positions. In the case of some of the workers in Stanford a couple of years ago, their employer at the time was underpaying them by $2 an hour. And when the state made the employer pay the workers the correct amount, each employee received notice that they, would not, that they would get the raise, but no longer get medical insurance, vacation days, and sick time. How can we continue to be, how can we continue to know what is going on in these cases mentioned here and merely look away? And how can we know that we have people coming to our buildings and having cocaine dropping out of their pockets and compromising our judges? Thank you. Uh, the second speaker is, is it, is it Patty Space? Yes, that's right. Ladies and gentlemen, good evening. Tonight I would like to discuss an extremely important topic pertaining to the Judicial Department as it relates to the public. However, before I address that very serious matter, there are a few suggestions I would like to make in an effort for judicial to better serve the public. Just recently, I found an individual's folder containing very personal information, including her social security number, the deed to her home, and other personal information in public bathrooms. There was no place for her to retrieve these items. Fortunately, I did find her phone number inside and called her. However, there have been many instances where items were left in the courthouse and just disappeared because there was no central location for them to receive such items. My suggestion is for a lost and found box to be placed in each courthouse. It is my suggestion that art be exhibited in the courthouses. Perhaps a program for victims, children, cancer patients, etc. can be created whereby they can display their artwork in their courthouses. This would be an inexpensive and beneficial way to create a harmonious environment for both employees and the public. I believe that this new judgeless for the procedure, which is currently underway, is extremely detrimental to our system. It is my belief that it is necessary for the jury panels to hear from a figure of authority how the system could not function without each individual's willing participation, that should they find themselves one day in need of a jury, that they would want willing, fair, and impartial individuals to sit on their very cases, that it is a great life experience to serve as a juror, and it is also their civic duty. Many attorneys have also voiced this concern to me. 
I believe that a lot of suggestions slash complaint box should be placed in each courthouse and that someone be appointed to review and address these suggestions and concerns. It is my suggestion that with it is my suggestion that the judicial department is in dire need of an internal affairs department. Which brings me to the very serious and important matter for which I have come tonight. There are serious unethical practices taking place within the ranks of upper management in our judicial department. These issues involve corruption, abuse of authority, gross waste of funds, threatening, harassment, and intimidation. To say it is mere mismanagement is a gross understatement. These individuals in upper management who have been appointing their friends to high level upper management positions, even going as far as to create positions which never existed before. They are motivated by greed and not by an intention to create a better judicial system. There have been instances of paying their friends for time that they have not even worked. There have been instances of destroying computer hard drives in order to protect themselves from information that was stored upon these drives. There have been instances of removing documents from offices and replacing these documents with favorable information to cover themselves. Individuals in our office have actually been threatened by a judge that if we did not acquiesce to their appointment of this individual, that we would lose our jobs. A special favor was repaid to this very judge who sat on the panel for this appointment. In that, his friend has not been given a position in our department. Other friends have recently been given, given positions in our department as well. Individuals in upper management have placed their friends into positions of authority Individuals who were never who have never attempted to accommodate the public in any way whatsoever. One such individual would not even answer the telephone in an effort to assist the office. That individual, for years, did absolutely nothing to assist the department within which they now supervise. <clears throat> At every turn, that individual complained about her assignment and continually threatened the individuals with whom she worked. Her motivation to remove our past supervisor was driven by her greed to hold that position and possess control over those very individuals who in the past she did threaten. Many members of my department had to hire attorneys to protect themselves due to the threats made by these individuals in upper management. The individuals in upper management hired outside counsel to protect themselves from what they had done. An extraordinary amount of money was spent for this outside representation, taxpayers' money, just to protect these members upon a man just to protect these members of upper management for actions they had taken in order to appoint their friends to top level positions. Appointments of numerous directors and program managers have been made in certain departments in which there was no need for such positions. Positions created for the friends. These, corporate, these corrupt individuals are milking the system dry to the tune of several hundreds of thousands of dollars annually. In the many years that they have held these upper management positions, they have run the judicial branch into the ground, both monetarily and spiritually. These individuals are accountable to no one. There is no system of checks and balances as far as their actions are concerned. They feel they are untouchable, and as of yet, they have been untouchable. More directors or program managers is not what we need to do the job which could be performed by one individual. Our courtrooms lack marshals, reporters, clerks, caseworkers, just to name a few. One such individual actually told us that we were peons and that we were worthless, and that soon we would be replaced by recording equipment. That individual probably never set foot in the courtroom. The judicial system functions solely on those employees who have been told that they were useless. <clears throat> it is the clerks, the marshals, the reporters, case flow, and DCF workers, probation, secretaries, etc., who make this system work. Ms. Pace, your funding is up, I think, you just to no one has come to us to ask for our input. So, let me just go back. The judicial department does not effectively serve the public unless it deals with these very serious issues first. If employees who, if you have employees who are satisfied who believe that they will be treated fairly and with respect, they will better serve the public. If the employees of this state have no trust and confidence in our judicial system, how can one expect the public to trust and have confidence in our judicial branch? No one has come to us for our input, but be that as it may, in order to fulfill our job responsibilities, we need confident, honest, fair individuals in positions of authority, people that we can trust and rely on to get the job done, to run the departments effectively for the benefit of our, our citizens. 
individuals that are not motivated by greed. If this commission is sincere in ensuring that it addresses the concerns of these employees and fulfilling their jobs and responsibilities, then this commission will address these very serious issues that pertain to this corruption by upper management individuals, because that is the best way to serve the public and to gain their trust. Thank you for your time.